Okay, so um, I've gone straight for the paradigm shift. Um, normally, I'd ease you into this, but I think you can take it. Um, the, the paradigm shift is, is the ability to take um, what you know, and I always use the example of a, of a plastic bag, where everything you know is in this plastic bag, and that bag is your world view. It contains your rationale. The paradigm shift is to take out those things, pull the plastic bag inside out, which is to make people feel quite ill, and put everything back in again. So it means you can look at the same things from two different, basically two different angles, rather than, and those two different angles include the fragmented way or the holistic way. But to, to go to the holistic, you can't just go there, you have to deconstruct, break down, so that you can, I can, so I can then reconstruct. Otherwise you just get resistance to change, naturally. So, um, the paradigm shift, Irving Kaur, who was a, um, a physiologist at the Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine, I think he was there, <coughs> died many, many years ago, asked for this paradigm shift. Now, a paradigm is not the same as a model. You get models within a paradigm. You have two basic paradigms, the Cartesian and the Gertian, as we saw being here today. So if you imagine those are two boxes, one's Cartesian, one's Gertian, but what we keep doing is creating new models in the same paradigm. Cranial, visceral, structural, whatever you want to call it, are new models in the same paradigm. We need to shift to a new paradigm, and that is really uncomfortable. So we'll end up on Saturday with the ability to, to jump through free will to each paradigm when, when, when we have to choose. But to, to jump to the other paradigm, we have to deconstruct one so you can recognise it, so you can avoid it when you know that's not the one I want to be in. So a paradigm is your world view. And as I said, we keep getting new models in the old paradigm, not new paradigms. The book for this understanding um, modern context is Thomas Kuhn's book, The Structure of Scientific Revolution which again will be in every language available. So the structure of scientific revolution. Osteopathy was a scientific revolution. Um, and of course the word revolution means going around again. Back to Aristotle, back to Plato, back to Hegel, back to Fichte, back to whatever, but Goethe. It's a scientific revolution. It's going round again, round and round and round. Um, it's not an easy book to read, but then, hey hum, as we said at the break earlier on, if you want to go down the gym, it's no good lifting the lightest weights you can find. It's going to be heavy to lift it. Right. And you will have to do it again to benefit from it, not just once. Right. So, uh, Norbert Russell Hansen wrote a book called Patterns of Discovery in, in uh, 1958. And osteopathy was a discovery. They just still discovered osteopathy, the principle of philosophy. Um, he used cards as a quality phenomenon, which those of you who haven't seen before, we're, we're going to do again anyway. And as um, Craig Holridge was saying in this video just now, there's more to seeing than meets the eye. There's, a, there's another level than just sensation. We have to go beyond sensation. We have to do that. So I have to reconstruct you to go beyond sensation. Um, and of course, if there's more to seeing than meets the eye, there must be more to palpating than meets the hand. You must go beyond the sensation of the hand. It's the only way you, we can progress into what I call more advanced levels or heightened awareness levels. Even Craig Holdridge mentioned that in the video as well. Um, so I'll start by showing you a figure, which some of you have seen already, but it's a good exercise anyway. Um, and this is the ground figure shift, the, the cube. Um, or necky cube, as they call it. Now, you can make this shift, but it's not shifting. It's back to context again. Okay, it will shift. If you look up, if you, this might help. Uh, a bit of labeling. So you've got A and B, but it's that shifting, pro you're right. <laughs> so the is going back and forth. I know. <laughs> but that's, your, that's you doing that. So, it's, so your senses pick up the, the black frame. Okay, but your consciousness is making it shift. So the consciousness, the activity, so you, you, you never quite have it fully open, it's always shifting. The perspective is always shifting, so you're going, to, you're going from sort of top left to bottom right. Now, just imagine that 
one hand, let's make it easier. Just imagine that one hand is A and one hand is B. Rather than just looking at A and looking at B. The way, what you want to do is open the box and keep it open. You want to open your patient and keep it open so you can see. So, here's what you do. There's a difference between sensation, as we'll, do, we'll look at now, as I'm breaking it down for you, and cognition. Both work together, but both can work independently. You can close your eyes and still see. So you can look at that figure, close your eyes, and I can still see. That's cognition, as well as seeing. You don't need your eyes to see with, but you need your eyes to see with, if you know what I'm saying. So, if you, if you look at A, if you, can, if you can do this, this is a bit of hard work. If you look at A, but think of B, and the box will open. If you look at B, but think of A. So one part is in your sense, one part is in your cognition. You're dragging the thing open. And that takes practice. It gets bigger, but it stays the same. It can't get bigger, but it seems to get bigger because of context. Now, if you imagine one hand is B and one hand is A, I can now palpate by feeling one hand but thinking the other. I've given you the methods here, this is going to take years to get sorted out. A lot of lonely nights. So, basically, to, to expand the body, you have to think one and feel one. And that's not easy, but it just, it just takes practice. So, and you can complicate matters as well. I mean, you can imagine that all, the, all those lines are different tissue planes, or different types of tissue. So it's a lot of thinking and, and feeling. Not splitting the two, but exercising both of them. Because what happens is you'll suddenly start organizing your boxes and squares, and that's because you are thinking and, and, and thinking and seeing at the same time. But it's controlling thinking and seeing. Now the next thing I'm going to show you, most of you have probably seen before, but some of you might catch you out to start with, and the point, and I'll, and the point will be made afterwards, okay? So a lot of you have seen that image before. <coughs> so has, has anyone not seen that image before? Hands up. Okay. You've seen it. No, I mean not before. Who hasn't seen it before? Oh, that's more like it. <laughs> we has got inside out. So those who have seen it before, please shush. <laughs> um, those who haven't seen it before, hands up who doesn't see anything except blotches. To be honest, it, you, just see blo blo you just see blotches, right? Okay, that's your sensory system working. You're, look, you're, you're seeing blotches. Now, if I, I can get your cognitive system working by saying there is the head of a giraffe there. Right? Now, that was already there, but, you're, but you weren't seeing it, you're only sensing the blotches. There's a difference between sensing and seeing. Does that make sense? So you saw blotches, and I say, head of giraffe, you go, oh yeah. But it was, it, nothing changed, you changed, not that. So we want you to see the patient's problem, not to sense it. But your senses come first, and then you see. Now, seeing comes through meaning and theory. The moment I said giraffe's head, you start organising it into something from what you already know, which is the head of a giraffe. Then it appears. So when I say to a student, so a student says to me, oh, I can't feel anything, and I say, hang on a minute, yeah, C2 on the right's a bit stiff, and they go back again, and they go, oh, yeah. Because it isn't, it's got nothing to do with sensation, but it includes sensation. So to go deeper into something doesn't mean pushing harder. It doesn't mean repeatedly touching. It means making it meaningful, making it thoughtful. So the giraffe's, the giraffe's eye is here, then the nose, then the mouth, then the front of the throat, back of the neck, and the horns. Have we all got it? Hands up who hasn't got it. We don't want to leave anybody behind. Okay? So again, you. Second. 
Emilia can also see one from the, from, from the back, from the, from the side. You can see, this is, this is the side, the draft is looking this way. Look at that. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I can see that, but I should also see one looking the other way. Really? Keep that yourself. <laughs> it's between you and me. That's a, that's a special one. No. Okay, so, okay, so the thing I want to put across to you is, there is sensing and there is seeing. You sense the blotches, but when I said giraffe's head, you saw the giraffe's head. And that, and that was the process of breaking down your perception, making you now realise what perception is. Perception is one thing happening in two places, not two things happening. Don't, don't for, always avoid duality. It's one thing happening in two places, the senses and cognition. They are the same places happening twice, not two separate things. We have to watch our language, otherwise we get, we get tripped up. So, we, so it, it's not about treating the patient more successfully, it's about seeing more successfully what is wrong. Then comes the intuitive judgment about what to do, the how. how not what am I going to do to this patient, how am I going to do it to this patient, the how, not the what. I don't want to tell you what to do, I want, to treat, I want you to come, want to come across a how to do it so you can take it away and use it. And the, and the whole evolution aspect gives you that clinical basis of a reasoning to move forward because of evolution. That's so important towards form and, and motion. So the evolution is the how, which we're going to... Oh, tomorrow's going to be great, Dan, I'm looking forward to tomorrow, because it's the first time I've ever done it. Um, and some great graphics there about how to see evolution happening in the present by form. <coughs> So, um, those of you who haven't done it before, if you haven't seen that picture before, then you haven't been in my lectures before. Correct me? Mm -hmm. Correct. So, so, some of you have done this, some of you haven't. This is uh, an experiment invented by Immanuel Kant, and then taken up by um, William James. Incredibly complicated, as you can see. A lot of, it, a lot of, uh, tech, lot of instruments setting up. Right, so, any, any hand will do. One flat hand, those of you who haven't done it before, if you want to join in, um, and a finger. Right, so, what you do is, I want you to, just like the box you've seen, A and, A and B, I want you to concentrate on one face, which is like, concentrate on your finger. Concentrate on your finger touching your hand repeatedly. So you can feel your finger touching your hand. If you do that, just do it repeatedly, but concentrate on your finger. Just, and you can feel the tip of your finger, yourself touching your hand. Okay, now, just like the box. It's hard. I know it's just practice again, but I can feel my, I'm, I'm used to it, I suppose, but I can do that and I can feel my finger touching my hand. Now, now you shift your consciousness. Feel your hand being touched by your finger. That's easier. Right, perhaps that's easier. This is bigger space probably. But the point is, the movement's still the same. That's the point. It's a change in consciousness. <coughs> it's a shift of, con it's not the shift of action. It doesn't matter what you do with your hand, it depends where your consciousness is. So when I have someone, so if I'm touching someone's neck, and that doesn't mean that's what I'm treating. That doesn't mean what I'm putting place in my consciousness. It could be lower down. I could be doing a bit of cervical traction, but paying attention to the lumbar sacral area, or the bowel, or anywhere. But this is my point, this is my point of, of contact. It's got nothing to do with what I'm thinking. This is why it was no good writing down lots of A.T. Stills techniques, because it didn't tell you what you were thinking. So I can feel right through somebody without them, just by changing point of conscious. So if, I, if, I'm, if, I, so if I'm touching shoulder, either side, but my consciousness is outside, okay? If I, touch, if I just do that, I'm outside. But my consciousness is now in between my hands, not at my hands. If my consciousness is between my hands, he can feel that inside, you feel that? Right inside the shoulder, but something there, do it. That's a change in consciousness. If I think outside again, dead. Feel the difference? Yeah, just a it's massive, massive difference. I can go right, I can do that right through someone's head as well. I'll teach you to do that. It's a change of, it's not, it's nothing but consciousness. Conscious, consciousness for Goethe was as real as a tree, as real as river, as real as mud, as real as grass. It was, it's in nature, but it's nowhere. So put it somewhere. I'm going to do it to you. 
So check, put, because consciousness is nowhere, I'm the instrument to place it somewhere. So I'm outside. Okay, I'm now inside, there. Get it? <laughs> so I've made my consciousness somewhere, rather than nowhere. You place it in between the cars. Oh, yeah. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, it's active absence. Because, because I'm, I'm placing context into something. And this is what they're looking at evolution. This is why I became bone, because this, this, is, the most, this is the longer standing tissue. So therefore, place it through that, understand that. And it really, it works. It works within seconds, literally. It doesn't shift. It's just, it's just changing my attention. And it's no good me giving you techniques now and you copying them because it has no substance. We need to go through the process. Otherwise, it becomes weak. You need to be standing up here in a few months' time or years' time, being able to talk like me and be able to deliver it. We don't, I'm not, the reason why it's going to take two seconds, I don't want to take shortcuts. I want, you to be, I want to be as deep as possible so you can go on ahead and do it. And know why you're doing it, how you're doing it, and what reason. Why are you looking so scared? Look, your face is like shocking at all of Eyes wide open. I didn't come for this, I didn't, didn't pay for this. Okay. If you imagine uh, Flatland. Oh, yeah, I've seen the film. I mean, the, not the film, the book, yeah, in, great in, in, Have you read Flatland? Has anyone read Flatland? Who wrote it? 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 It's about. It's about that thing in the book, the book is a brilliant book, Flatland, if you can get hold of it. It was written so it was many years ago. Written. Yeah, but uh, there's a, 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 a picture of it uh, in, within uh, how the people we know. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, the paradigm shift is going from flat to three dimensional. Yeah. And if 3D goes through flat, you see the dots, dots oh, yeah. getting wider and smaller again. And actually, that's where mathematics comes in. Right. To try and explain within Flatland how the three D thing works. Okay. So if you, does, does anyone know about? Does, hands up, does know about Flatland? Mm -hmm. Who doesn't know about Flatland? Okay, okay. There's a book I can't remember. You can get hold of a very small book. Uh, so, that's it. That's it. Edwin Abbott. Right. So, if you, if the people living in Flatland only thought of circles, but spheres were passing through the land, Flatland, what they would see. Is circles getting bigger and smaller? They wouldn't, they wouldn't see, because they can't see in three dimensions, they only see in two dimensions. So the brand would be a circle appearing and closing, because they can't see three dimensions. They actually see spheres passing through. So instead of seeing actual spheres, they only see, you know, circles getting bigger, getting bigger and smaller. The moment they start thinking in 3D, where did that sphere come from? And this is the same, in a, in a way, same thing. Their senses are one thing, but their consciousness is another. And I'm teaching you the depth of that idea of consciousness and senses working together at your will. So all the textbooks talk about when you touch something, it stimulates receptors, the information goes up with you, into your brain, and then you see. It's just nonsense. It doesn't work like that. You don't, you don't perceive up your arm. It doesn't go up. You know, you can touching something is not feeling it. Otherwise, sensation in your body will be so much. But like, I'm going to say something now, and again, it's going to make you shift. Okay? You are not aware of wearing your clothes. You just thought about your clothes, didn't you? Because if, if you were aware of you wearing your clothes, you'd be like that all day, uh, like something's wet. <laughs> You're not aware of wearing your clothes. Mm -hmm. you put, you put, you're aware when you put them on, thank God. But after a while, you just carry on. It, it's not bombarding my brain, because I'm wearing my oh, constant stimulation. It's nonsense. So you don't get stimulation going in. <laughs> Something that touches doesn't stimulate. It's up to you to make that, to, to ignore it. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, next, next highly expensive experiment. Um, if you have, a, if anybody has a tissue and a pen or something soft, even if you use, your, even if you use a clothes and that, if you find something soft to touch, right, and a pen. Okay, so we can do this experiment. You don't have to. I think they're just going to hand out. He's going to hire you some tissues <laughs> to lease them out. Yeah, find, if you can find something soft to touch. Now, 
Don't touch either of those things. Put them down. Put the pen down. Put the soft bit down. Put everything down. Choose one hand. Don't just just choose one hand for this experiment. Okay? It gets a little bit gets confusing. Um, what I want you to do before you do it, listen, listen to the full thing. First thing you do, you will, you will, when I say go, you will hold the pen and be aware of the hardness of the pen. Okay? Don't do it now. I'm ready. So I'm ready. No, 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 wait for it, wait for it, put it down, put down, put down, finished yet? Yeah. When you, when you, that's, that's 10 years fine. When, when you, when you are aware, and this is, a, this is the crucial part, when you think you are aware of having, being able to control the sensation of the hardness, I want you to keep that hardness feeling, put the pen down and pick up the tissue, but keep thinking of hardness when you pick up the tissue. You know where this is going, don't you? <laughs> so pick up the pen, feel it. Only use that hand. When you feel you're, you, can, you, can, you can keep that hardness feeling, put the pen down and then feel with the same hand something soft. But keep thinking hardness. Keep thinking hardness. Now the key is you don't get the softness through immediately. There's a delay. Now, if you could really control that through practice, you would feel what you want to feel. Now, what science says is that's subjective. That's not, that's not rational, but yeah, because it is, because you, you're in control of the situation. You can go where you want. Absolutely, but what people of science are not aware of is that's really what's happening. If I touch something hard, if I'm, if I'm feeling a, a bony joint, and then I go to soft tissue, I'm not immediately feeling the soft tissue, I'm feeling the effect from the bony joint. If you, if you go out in the garden, and we've all done this, you're in your garden, summer's afternoon, bright sunshine, doing a bit of digging, and you're waiting for a phone call. Of course, because it's nice and sunny, you hear the phone ring, you run into the house, dark. <laughs> it's like pitch black all of a sudden. It wasn't, wasn't when you were looking in, it looked all right. As soon as you run in the house, like boom, dark. Because you haven't adapted, it's, it's, it's an adaptation process. But we're not aware of this adaptation process. Now, if you're aware of this adaptation process, you're going to wait. You're going to say, right, I'm feeling this joint, bony joint. Now I feel the soft tissue, let me just wait for a second because you have to take with you what was happening. Um, if I'm, the only reason I know what's in the, uh, we're in a room was what, what um, uh, Ian McGurkis was saying in that video for lunch. My left hemisphere is narrow, my right hemisphere is broad. So I know I'm in a room because my right hemisphere is telling me there's a room, my left hemisphere is picking out the pieces, but both work together. Otherwise, I see one wall completely forget that, see another wall, completely forget that wall, and, and I'd, I'd just see a series of walls and, and bits, and I wouldn't know where I was. But because we've got two hemispheres, it's working together. Now, same with your palpation. If you're palpating something, don't concentrate down here, be aware of where you are while you're palpating. That will expand the thing as well. And you'll see more clearly. Use both hemispheres, not dominant with one. But I'm trying to feel Dura, or fascia, or whatever you want to feel, is the left hemisphere. Be aware of yourself doing the palpating and things will enlarge much more clearly. If my proprioceptors finished at the end of my hands, I would not be aware of the head of the club. I want to be aware of making a small circle. Because the circle at the end of the club is far greater, so the arc is far greater than I'm making with my hands. So my mechanoreceptors, all the physiology textbooks are telling me that I'm, I can only feel mechanics of my, it doesn't talk about consciousness, which goes beyond the physical, because consciousness is nowhere. We bring consciousness to somewhere, i.e. the head of the club. I'm bringing my consciousness to the head of the club, not from my brain into the head of my club or from my receptors. So people are models of consciousness, but consciousness is nowhere. You are, some, your body is somewhere. So all the physiology journals are, are incomplete again because I wouldn't be able to feel the head of the club. I wouldn't be aware of it if I just stopped at my wrists, be like doing this and then trying to see across the room when you've got something stuck in front of your face. So basically, we bring consciousness to a location. We bring it somewhere. 
Uh, the theory hypothesis or background knowledge held by an observer can influence in a way, so a major way, what is observed. Your background, your foreground. So when I do my videos for YouTube and whatever, um, on all the social media platforms, there's always tons of books behind me. You've seen that. So it's just all my books. That's my background. So my mate, the magician, says to me, Jay, can't you tidy that bookshelf up? I was like, no, that is my background, right? There's no order, okay? But it's not chaos. I know where everything is, I think. Um, and that's why I do the background as the books all the time, because that's my background. My foreground is talking to you. Symbolic. Right. Um, so all senses behave in the same way. So the, but your background theory dictates how your senses, or how you perceive through your senses, not how your senses work, how you work through your senses. Uh, and touch is just another way of seeing. So again, the cut, the special, those, those who know what this is, shush, um, those who don't, um, let's see what you think. Anyone notice anything wrong? Little cut. Sorry? Little cut. This one? Three. It's larger. Yeah, but that, yeah, there's no standard size. See. There's no standard size for a card. Thank you. Kajin, did you hear that? Would you like to tell the gentleman what you just said? Number three needs to be black. Yeah. See? Yeah. So you can see it, but you're not seeing it. Thank you. One for the ladies. <laughs> see? Did you hear that? Yes, he doesn't get it. Could you... Go on, go on, go for it, go for it. You see? You see, once again, you're sensing, but not making sense of. It's right in front of you. The senses, but you don't, you don't see with your eyes. You don't palpate with your hands. It's your mode of consciousness. And again, this is where the whole idea of evolution comes in tomorrow. Because even though you're seeing these things, I'm going to teach you how to see things moving. How to see things moving. They're not moving, but how to see them moving. Through, through evolutionary ideas, through form, through structure. So not, not to sense them, but to use your, use your imagination, as the late Henry Bortoff said, use your imagination as an organ of perception. So this weekend's going to change a lot for everybody. A lot. But it doesn't take away what we should be doing normally with patients, like taking a case history, taking the blood pressure. This adds to it, this gives it depth. It goes beyond the superficial. Is it, is, is it, does it bring us uh, into trouble because the, uh, the card of the number three is, is bigger? It, it brings you, that, it brings you trouble. Yeah. But you're still stuck. In, you're still stuck in a quantitative way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You're still in the Cartesian. The first thing is it's, it's bigger. Uh, it's like, uh, yeah. Size isn't everything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's bigger, you know. Immediately, all the, all the males are going. It's bigger. Yeah. And the ladies are going. It's different colour. <laughs> <laughs> so experience and experiment. Both from the Latin, experience, to try thoroughly. Experiment it means to, to distance oneself, to make it further away. Experience means at first hand, taking the appearance seriously. Periri, which is inside the words there, peri and peri, means peril or trial, to take a personal risk to take to trial, to take a personal risk. So you can see experiment and experience are exactly the same words. But we dominate through experiment, which makes the whole scenario and situation weak. We need experiment and experience to work together, to bring back what it actually means, and to make it more powerful. But we're just too dominant with experiment. So I said to... Um, the late Henry Bortoff, if I wanted to explain um, what you are talking about on a bar napkin at the bar, how would I do it? He said, well, you get yourself, you get a nap bar napkin, he said, and a pencil was the best thing, and you, you do a bit of light shading on the bar napkin. It's a very light shading. 
And this light shading is all the matter in the, in the universe. Okay, very simple idea. Um, so that's slightly, this is slightly mottled, it's not white, so this is slightly shaded, okay? Then what you do is you get your pencil and you shade maybe two, three other areas a bit more intensely, okay? So what you get is three areas a bit more intensely. Now, the other way of thinking about this is it's just, it's on the beach. So what you've done is you're on, you're on, you're on the sand, but you've piled up three heaps of sand. Mm -hmm. There's another way of thinking about it, okay? Then what you do is you name, you, you can name those three heaps of sand, or the three shadows that you've made more intent, and you can give them names, say cat, car, and a house. Then you can either you draw an imaginary line through two of them, okay? Just like cutting a cake. Just imagine you're cutting a cake. You take half away, and now you look from the side, not from the top, okay? What you get is that sort of image. Does that make sense? It's all, there's, a, there's, a, there's a heap of sand here, there's a heap of sand here. But they've still got their names, Cat and Carl. You with me? We, we haven't left anybody behind. Okay? Who doesn't, under, hands up who doesn't understand? I don't know what you, huh? what, what's the difference in heights between Carl and Cat? No, just, just I'm lazy with this one. No. no. <laughs> or, or, no, no, or, <clears throat> which one's bigger? <laughs> okay? This has got more potential energy, this has got less potential. Okay, if you think from an energetic point of view. Like if I ask the if I ask the cat to run to the car, not a lot of damage. If I ask the cat, if I ask the car to run to the cat, a lot of damage. But they're the same, they're, they're, they're the same sand, basically. So what the Isaac Newton world does and the Cartesian world, it only sees from that aspect. Only. It sees as two separate phenomena mind and body, any substance, separate substance. Now we recognise that, that's, that's important, but what we, what we need to do is add to that. We need to add to that. So what we're looking at here is the seeing of the cat and the car as separate end products, finished, done. What we need to do is realise that if you're coming up from underneath, this is finished, this is not. This is organic, this is inorganic. What we want to do is be able to change our way of seeing things. We want to come into, into the end with the cat, not see the end as a finished product. It's, the cat's moving, the cat's alive, it's breathing, diastolic, systolic, digestive processes. We want to join in on that experience. But we can, because we are part of the same sand. We're not separate from the cat. We're not separate from the car, but we can leave the car alone for a moment because that's, that's, we have to change our consciousness for the car. Mm -hmm. But for the cat, if, it, if, if, if you're holding the cat in our hands, we don't want to hold it like we hold the car. We want to be able to, we are the same substance as the cat, the same universe. Therefore, if we back off, we'll be in process with the cat, not separate from the cat, and not perceiving the end. <laughs> You're right with that. You with me? Okay. Barely hanging on. So if we, we forget that by backing off a little bit and stop objectifying the cat, we begin to experience the cat as an intuitive, sensuous phenomenon. We're, we're, we're coming. We're, okay. Here's the river again. Here's the river. So I'm looking in the river again. See my reflection. By the time, as you know, you decide to do that, it's down the road. So what I want to do is not put my hand here. But put my hand upstream. Play with it upstream so I can control this bit here. Not put it there, it's too late. So I need, I need to back off, I need to back off, back off and go upstream. You need to come upstream when palpating. Not at it, come in with it. Catch yourself in the act of palpating, not palpating at it. And I'll keep repeating myself over and over and over again, okay? Catch yourself. So if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm throwing something, okay, I want to catch myself in the act of throwing, not the throne. I want to catch myself in the act of throwing. It's too late once that's gone. Sorry. Was that, was that, was that what you said, when you touch a patient, you, you're like, like uh, somebody who's 
coming, climbing on a, a riding horse. Yeah, it's moving. Yeah. But catch yourself climbing on the horse. Does that make sense? In, in the act of jumping on the horse. And, re and never, never get on the horse. Because once you get on that horse, you're finished. Be aware of yourself palpating and stay there. Don't palpate. That's too late. It's the end. Don't get on the horse, whatever you do. But be getting on the horse. Got it? I don't get it. Don't worry. Look, <clears throat> come here, stand up. You've asked it now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you something. So if you, can I stand here? What's your name? Mihalda. 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 Miranda. Miranda, got it. Yeah. I'm going to hear my own voice too much. Right, if you stand there now, if I'm looking at somebody, okay, now, when I close my eyes, just walk slowly like that. When I open them, stop. When I close my eyes, walk slowly towards me. When I open my eyes, stop walking, yeah? Okay. Right, so, there's the patient, okay? Now, if I close my eyes... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stop, right, okay, when I open. All I'm, ever see, all I'm ever seeing is the end of the process. The process is moving. Okay, ready? And again, it's the end. But I think I'm seeing... I'm, always, I'm, I'm never with the process. So my consciousness must not be opposite. Okay, if you go back again. My consciousness should not be opposite the phenomenon. My consciousness should be here. Um, thank you. Do you get the idea? I'm in the process with you. I'm with you, not opposite you. <coughs> right, it might, might be easy tomorrow and put the hands on. But do, do, does anyone else see where I'm coming from? Yeah. It's that. It's, it's like. Have you, have you ever danced? Yes. Do you like dancing? Yes. How about you like dancing? How often, how often do you go dancing? Uh, not often. No. Okay, but when you dance, do you, do you play an instrument? No. What did you, Miranda? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you got any hobbies? Work. <laughs> no. No. If you if you if you're playing an instrument, okay, um, I'm going to show you another video soon. I think this is this is about nearly coming up to the right time. If you does anybody here play an instrument? Hands up. Okay, there you go. Looks right next to you. <laughs> what happens if you think about playing? It doesn't work. Yeah. He said, if you think about playing, it won't work. Oh, I, think it's, I think it's about, now, about time for my, my favourite video of all time. I think you've earned it. Um, this is going to freak you out. Have you seen the Barry Sanders video? Okay. Okay, this is, this is literally six minutes. Um, now, this video is... I just love, I'm love using all my social media. Um... It actually sounded like Hawking's voice. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, where am I going? I'm trying to change the rearrangement. I'm going to turn this off for a second because of copyright laws. I'm going to turn this off because of copyright laws just in case I get done.